in the house of the Lord. You all may be seated. Saints, we're living in some terrible times now. We know that. It's not just something to say. But we're living in terrible times. And we as a people, we are not to be as those that have their heads in the sand. We ought to be watchful. Amen. I believe in, with all my heart that the Lord is soon to come. And the people of God, we got to be watchful, y'all. We got to know that the Lord will come on somebody. Come on now. He will not tarry. We used to say, I've heard it said, I've even made the mistake of standing myself. If the Lord tarry, the Bible says he will not tarry. It's his time. We can't put the Lord in a box according to what we think and what we feel about it. Amen. But I know for sure that the way that the world is going now is not the way that the Lord intended. Amen. So we're going to use for us something this morning. Watch and be ready. Watch and be ready. Here I'm going to tell you something. Life is a subject matter that's deeper than we can imagine. And we think of life as we think of life as we live it now here on this earth. But life that I'm talking about is greater than this. I, I remember uh, telling a story one time and I feel led to tell it again this morning. There was an old gentleman that ran upon a young man and he questioned the young man. He asked him, oh, what are you going to do with your life? And the young man said, well, I'm going to go to school and get my education. I'm going to get my education and I'm going to get me a good job. And I'm going to make a whole lot of money. Amen. And then the, the older gentleman asked the young man, he said, and then what? And the young man said, well, I'm probably going to go out and find me a wife. I'm going to find me a wife. I'm going to buy some, a nice home. I'm going to equip it with nice furniture. And we're going to drive a nice car because I have prepared. I'm going to prepare myself to, to live. And then the, the and just be happy. And then the old man asked the young man, and he said, and then what? And then the young man, he paused for a moment, and he said, well, I guess I'm, I'm going to die. And the old man said to the young man, and then what? And it's the then what that we need to be concerned about. This is not it, y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. And this couldn't be, this couldn't be it. This couldn't be the totality of what God intended for his greatest of creations that we know of. This couldn't be it with all the trials and troubles and up and downs and all arounds and all the crazy that go. This, this couldn't be. This couldn't be it. This could be the glory that God has prepared, the things that God has prepared for us to come on now. It's got to be something far greater than this in store for the people of God. But the thing about it is we can't be distracted by the things that are in this world. We can't be distracted by the, the, the briefity of this life. Because it's brief, y'all in comparison to eternity. Help me, Lord. Uh, eternity is, is so vast that it cannot be explained in natural terms. You see, that's where God comes from. And God deals with eternity. Time is just something we have to use as human beings to measure certain things. But God is not in a box concerning that because he's God and he's sovereign and amen God does not have to answer to anybody amen amen I want to go to the book of Luke first of all the 12th chapter of the gospel 
of Luke. And as I get older, Brother Hamp, amen, I think about all the things that I used to do and used to be and all the people that I've come in contact with in life and amen and people in your life and people out of your life. We leave, we have to deal with that thing we call separation. Now I don't want to discourage nobody, but I want to, I think sometimes we have to take a, a more a, a, a sober approach to things. Uh, and sometimes we can get so uh, distracted by all the things that are going on around us is that we lose focus sometimes on the things that really matter. You see, God has blessed us to have this time that we have right now, amen, to prepare for Him. I tell you this, that God has something far greater than this life. Amen. But here it is. It says in the 37th verse of the 12th chapter of Luke, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to me and will come forth and serve them. Amen. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed that are those Servants, let me read that again. If he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, there it is. Blessed are those servants. Blessed, in other words, are those servants that are watching, anticipating the Lord's coming. Amen. Amen. You're uh, anticipating something good happening. And you, when you anticipate something good, you can't wait till it happens. You're just anxious. You want it to go on there because it's something that you, you want to happen. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the 39th verse says, and this no, and this no. That's a, that's a bold statement. And you hear somebody say, no this. He said, and this no. That if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Amen. You don't know exactly when he's coming, but you know he's coming. That's why we, uh, when we leave our homes, we put. We put locks on the door because we don't know, and I'm going to clear this up. If a thief is going to come through, we don't know when they're going to come through. But if you, you make certain preparations and you do certain things to try to be prepared for whatever happens. So he's using this analogy here that if we had known, uh, come on now, if we had known what hour that the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Now, if there's something that you, uh, someone is coming and you, you don't know when they're coming, but you want them to come. In this case, we want Jesus to come according to the word of God. According to what we've been hearing ever since we were children, some of us, and Amen. And people say all the time, those that are negative, they say, well, we ain't been saying that all my life. He ain't came yet. You ought to watch that. You ought to watch that attitude. You ought to watch saying that and get around from people that doubt his coming, that doubt the word of God. He said he's coming, and he's coming. Amen. He says, know this. Mm -hmm. Now here is the 40th verse. Be therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh and an hour when you think not. When you 
think not. Everything is all good. You feel good. Everything's just good. And you're not paying attention to what's going on all around you. I watch a lot of news. My wife criticizes me sometimes. But my wife watches a lot of cooking channels. So, so yeah. But anyway, you know, I watch a lot of news. I watch stuff. I, I, I like to know what's going on around me. I like to know what other people are, are dealing with. In certain cities, we live here in Kansas City, and it's not a bad city to live in, uh, according to and compared to some other cities. If you go to places like uh, Philadelphia and Seattle and some places in Arizona, people are living like animals. I'm serious. They're living on the street. There are drugs out there that cause a person to go into a zombie state. What's the name? What's the name of it? Uh, 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 fentanyl. And they mix that with heroin and some other drug that they use as a tranquilizer on large animals such as horses and cows and large cats and different things like that. And what it does, it puts them in a zombie state. It puts them in a stupor. And when it puts them in the stupor, they're looking down at the ground. They want to look up, they want to straighten up, they're like this for hours. And they can't straighten up, they can't look up. So how could they look to the hill from which coming there? But the drugs are of the devil. And they, they put these people in that state, and we don't even know about it because we don't see it. I watch things like that, and I, uh, my daughter said, Dad, why are you always watching that, that kind of stuff? I said, so I can know how blessed I am. So I can know not to get lifted up in pride. Come on, somebody. I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it in the sense that how good God is. When I was on drugs, well, that's the reason why I have to have a certain compassion. I'm not judging those people. I feel so sorry for them. You can think that you're so strong, but if you devil and mess up, mess around and, and, and get into the wrong thing, it can take you to a place where you want to come out of it, but you can't. And you're in a stupor. And nothing but the power of God can bring you out of it. And I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. And what you see here today is not what I was. But this, because of God, because of Jesus, this is who I am now. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. Come on, man. all things have become new. But for a person that don't understand that, come on here. So now, therefore, now I'm watching. And I'm anticipating. And I'm believing every word of God. Even, watch this, when I find myself sometimes on the wrong side of it, y'all ain't saying nothing. In other words, when I have messed up or whatever, even if it was just in my thought process, even if it was just in the point where I was impatient, even if it was in the point where I got a little lifted up in pride, y'all ain't saying nothing. All these are distractions. Brother, you say something. That's been with me ever since I heard you say it. There are many distractions out here to cause us not to watch, to cause us not to be ready, we get caught up in our pleasure. We get caught up in the things that we want, in the self-centeredness of ourselves. But the Lord said, be ready. Watch and be ready because he can come at any time. Just when you was in the midst of having a ball. That means you didn't make it. That means you still, I'm still 
still down here. I don't want them to still be down here. When he comes, I want to make sure that the ministry green, I'm going to go back with him. So we have to check ourselves. That's the reason why we, it's so important. I love, I love the fact that we still have an in-person service. Yes, but at the same time, I'm very, very cautious because I love you and I don't want nobody to be suffering behind the fact that you tried to come to church. Amen. So we, if we would just do what we need to do to help ourselves and help somebody, don't be selfish. Do what you can do to help your brother and your sister. So sometimes we, we have some rules and regulations and things and people sometimes wrestle with that and have a problem with that, but, but it's necessary sometimes. Just like a stop sign and a traffic light is necessary. In other words, when you drive, you just can't drive wild and crazy and have a fast you want to go and not observe the stop sign or the yield sign. Some things you have to do. Watch and be ready. Hmm. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speaketh thou this parable unto us or, or, or even to all? Come on, man. He's speaking to all of us. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful? And wise, huh? So, steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. God's got a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. Take one day at a time. Sometimes we have to learn how to do that. Now, watch this. In other words, don't get so distracted with living this life on this side that you don't pay attention to the life that you're coming to. Mm -hmm. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. I'm looking for you, Lord. Look for him. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't be like that, that ostrich with his head in the sand. That's not what you want to do. All oh, your tail is out. And you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know what's coming up on you. We're not to do that. This the, the world and even this United States is in a bad way. Why? Because the heart of men waxing cold. Not paying attention to what God has said and prescribed for mankind in his word. And as a result of that, God is going to have to come back in Jesus and redeem us back to himself. He always said nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of a truth, not of a lie, but of a truth. All you hear is lies. Lie, 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 lie. You can't put no confidence in a lie. I heard Judge Judy say to a person that was in her court, she said, she said, ma'am, listen, when you tell me one lie, I don't believe nothing else you say. After you lie, and I, and I know you lie, why should I believe anything else you say? But if you turn on your TV, like I turn on my TV, you're going to hear a lot of lying going on. Why? Because that's of the world. That's the world system. They lie to get their what they want. To gain a, a certain position of superiority or whatever it may be, they lie to you. What's, what's so sad about it all, saints, is that the people are believing and putting confidence in what they know is a lie. In your, you said it. I heard you and I saw you say it. And then you turn around and still expect me 
need to believe it. And the sad part is, is some people do. They rather, they rather believe a lie than the truth. But the Bible says, of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming. Even saved folks, even folks that's in, ch in, in church get a little doubtful. Watch yourself now. Get a little distracted. Concerning all the things, this is not our home, y'all. Of the truth. We're just wayfaring men. We're just passing through here. Come on here. But the Lord wants us in this life to prepare for the next life. The great life. The heaven-bound life. Mm -hmm. Come on here. But it said, my, my Lord the Lord is coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and to be drunk. Don't get mad at the messenger. Don't get mad at people that's trying to help you. Come on here. But there's people that do that. Because people say, I don't want to hear all that. I don't want to hear all that stuff about Jesus. I don't want to hear it. I, I'm having too much fun. But your fun is going to run out. Your pleasure is temporal. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. Only what we do for Christ is going to last. I can't run as fast as I used to run, brother. I can't live like I used to live. I can't work on the church even like I used to work on it from a physical standpoint. I get tired. Uh, Brother Hampton, I get more tired than I, than I thought I would. Yes, <laughs> come on, somebody. So that lets me know, come on now, that this old building, this old body, it keeps on leaning, the old folks used to say. But that little man, he lived a new day by day, a new thought process, a new attitude, a new focus that we've got to learn to allow God to impute into us. He will do it. If we get rid of the distraction. See, that distraction is of the devil. He want to do anything to keep us from loving each other. He want to keep confusion in the midst of us. Come on here. He wants to take away our compassion and patience. And the Bible lets us know that we have need of patience. And even if the, after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. Come on now. Sister Jones, you know what I'm talking about. You have a need of patience. And after we have done all we know to do, we're constantly still being prepared. See, we're going to have to, come on, we're going to have to be presented to the Father. We're going to have to be presented. When I used to work for, I worked for a company, I don't think even around my Western Electric, when you, they, we used to make the telephones. And when I got out of the military at the Air Force, I went to work for them, and, and I was a ringer tester. And sometimes I worked in the wiring and we sat on the line and, and those phones had to pass inspection. Come on now. And the ones that weren't right, we had to set them to the side. Mm -hmm. And it was so pronounced that when I would get home when I was ringing, ringing them phones, they had salt, medium, and loud. I'd get home and, 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 and you, I thought the phone was still ringing. I'd hear, somebody get the phone. I did the phone man ring. But because that became a part of my everyday, come on now. I'm, 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 I'm taking us somewhere. 
but you got to get on. When it comes to God, God is every day. He ain't just when we, he, he, come on somebody. He ain't just, he ain't like Santa Claus. Just when we, when we want something. Just on our birthday. But God is every day. All day. In every way. And if we can get to that point, then that's, that's when we will be ready. Because we're thinking of him. We're looking for him. We're anticipating him. And the Bible says in the Proverbs of Third, acknowledge him in all. Not some. That ways. Don't lead to your own understanding. Your own understanding can sometimes be brought on by distractions. I'm sorry, brother. I'm just on it. Because that's what's affecting a lot of people. Things that will take your mind off of the Lord. Things that will take us in the opposite direction that the Lord would have us to go. Don't sing in your heart, he's delaying. Don't mess with God's time. You better be glad he's delaying. Because while he, if you think he's delaying his time, then you ought to be glad that he is if you ain't right. Because that'll give you more time to get right. Come on here. I don't care if I am the pastor. I have to get on my knees and pray and ask God to help me and strengthen me and deliver me and forgive me just like you do. Now if I can say that, a lot of won't, but mm -hmm. But it's later than we think. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour when he is not aware. Uh -huh, and will cut him in, in sunder. And will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. You don't want that. And I don't want that. I'm almost done with this portion. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, watch this, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Wow. And don't nobody like, unless you weird, getting a whooping. Some people like to be whooped. But if you're a normal person, come on here. You're saying that you come on, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. In other words, if you didn't know no better, but if you know better, you're going to be beat with many stripes. You see how merciful God is, even in his judgment? Y'all see that? Come on now. Commit things, uh, 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 but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. In other words, i got to get your attention. i got to let you know that what you're doing or what you did was wrong. Come on, my grandmother used to put it like this. Mama Rose used to tell us, she said, I'm going to beat you, <laughs> so the police won't have to beat you. I'm going to try to give you some sense, so that when you go out, they don't love you. See, this, this beat that, in this particular instance here, he said, I'm, I'm giving you these stripes because I love you and I want to correct you. Not, and in this case, not to punish you, you just didn't know, but now you know. Mm-hmm. Now here it is, in this scripture that people always quote, for unto whom soever much is given, of him shall be much required. Mm. And to whom men have committed much, of him they 
will ask the more. In other words, people get a job and they say, well, I want this job. And the company says, well, all right, well, you look like you're the right candidate. We're going we're gonna to hire you. And they have some, most, of, most jobs have a, a probation period. And the reason for that probation period is before they, want, before they put all their lock and stock in you, they want to see if you're going to hold. In other words, before we invest in your education and all this training and all the things that go into this job, we want to make sure that you're the person that we thought you were. Come on, somebody. People get into a job and they, and they go through all of that and they train them and then the person say, well, you know what? I think I ain't going to stay. I'm moving on. And they, in their minds, we've invested all And you're not going to stay. Come on here. It's, it's similar to this. Uh-huh. It says, And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. We expect you to do what we hire you to do. And that's why we invested so much in you. God, every child of God, God said, I've invested so much in you. Uh, I sent my son to the cross, and he hung on the cross. There's no greater investment. Come on, y'all. There's no greater investment. That's not a life thing that took place. That's hard. That was a hard thing, I believe. So for God to see his son suffering like that on the cross for no cause. He hadn't done anything except agree to save you and to save me. He did that because he loved us. And how can we turn our back on a holy and righteous God? Even when we were yet sinners. Watch and be ready. Yes, yes. If you go back to Matthew, the 25th chapter, about every preacher that's to preach, talks about the ten virgins. The ten five were wise and five were foolish. Five of them, they were, they were all considered, watch this, they were all considered, they were all virgins. Come on, y'all. Say that. They were all earth, but yet they all were watching. They were all anticipating his coming. They said five, five were wise and five were foolish. You could say, don't be foolish. Because if God's word says, if it says he's coming, he's coming. And we might as well to be ready. Be ready. Live every day because we don't know. Live every day as if it can be your last day. Do all the good that you can do while you can do it. While you have the breath in your body and the blood is running through your veins. Come on, somebody. I get it. I get it. I know sometimes you don't feel like it. And that's why this ain't no feel good. Feel like it way. We got to do like what Sister Hampton said. You just got to be. Be who you are. Be who God created you to be. And when we focus on that, we won't be distracted. I'm learning that. I'm getting better at it. I'm not perfect at it, but I'm learning that. Well, I remember being in the military and we would march. Those of us that went in the military would march. And you, you got to focus on the order while you march. Left way, right way. You better not turn the right when you're supposed to turn left. You better pay attention to what's going on. Come on, left face. Right face, you, 
Everybody, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Anywhere, it's a beautiful thing. I was going to do a mouth face, but I might chill and fall. But we used to do that. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, mouth face, you got to put that foot back there. Yeah, see, see, I can't get my balance in what it used to be. Because I'm getting old. And I got to ask this enough to know that. But my point is this. You got to pay attention to what's going on. We got to follow. Follow the water. You got to follow the word. Come on, somebody. 